Hello there. My name is Andy Watkins and I am a percussionist and assistant principal timpanist with the San Diego Symphony. The way I got my start in music and percussion was by playing drum set with my friends in rock bands and I was taking lessons and my teacher encouraged me to join the school band and from there I worked my way into marching band and orchestra. I was very interested in music so I decided to go to college and get my music degree. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the main instruments that we play and I'm going to start with what's called the tambourine. I'm sure many of you have seen or heard a tambourine before. A lot of times you see like rock bands and church choirs and you know things like that. They'll have uh, one that doesn't have a head on it but the, the ones we use in orchestras do and the reason is because we like to play very intricate rhythms on here with our hands. Tambourines come from a family of drums called frame drums. Every country and every culture has a version of this. Um, some of them have jingles, some of them don't, some of them are big, some of them are small. There's all different kinds. They can be made out of silver or bronze. These ones happen to be made out of chromium, um, which gives it a really nice high pitch uh, kind of articulate sound. So we play this all the time in the orchestra and there's many different techniques you can use on them. Uh, one thing I'd like to talk to you about today is rolls. I'm sure you've heard the term drum rolls. Um, we do them on many different kinds of instruments in the percussion family. There's the shake roll. There's the thumb roll or finger roll. And we just use those to get long sounds, sustained notes on a percussion instrument. Next, we're going to move on to triangle, one of my favorites. Can you guess why it's called a triangle? Um, all triangles have the three sides and an open corner on one side. And we hold them with a clip like this so it can vibrate freely. And we play them with a beater. This is one example. I mean, I'll show you. I've got a whole lots of different kinds of beaters here. And the reason we have these is because we can get many different kinds of sounds out of the triangle. We've also got many different kinds of triangles, different sizes and different materials. And you can hear the difference that the, in sounds that you get from choosing a different instrument or a different beater. And we use that to kind of go along with whatever is happening in the music. Moving on to the snare drum. The snare drum is one of the first things that we would learn as a percussionist because that's where we learn a lot of our technique and we can translate that to different instruments. If you're ever listening to any kind of pop or, or, or rock and roll music and you hear that drum beat, the booms, baps, booms, baps, booms, baps, the baps are usually played on snare drum. That's that high pitch kind of back beat that you hear on everything. Orchestral snare drums are very much the same as what you hear on a drum set. They have a drum head, just like on the tambourine. The difference with this one is that it has one on the top and the bottom. And what makes a snare drum a snare drum is the snares. And it has this lever on it that turns the snares on and off. And adjustments to make them tighter or looser. And that just gives it different types of sounds that you can use. So a snare drum without the snares on And then when you turn the snares on, uh, you get that, that snare sound of the snares buzzing against that bottom head. This is a mute. Uh, the mute basically just keeps it from ringing so much, um, so you can hear more of those little rhythms that are happening. This head that we play on is really tight. It's like a trampoline and it bounces the sticks up when we hit it. So we use that bounce to help us play really fast, intricate rhythms. If I were playing a clarinet, for instance, if I want to make a note last longer, I can just keep my air going and the note will continue. But on a drum, all it has is that. All it has is a single note. How do you make that turn into a long note? So that's what's called a drum roll. 
It's like what you hear at the beginning of the Star Spangled Banner, for instance. And the way we do that is by bouncing the stick multiple times in each hand uh, so, it's, so it blends together and sounds like a continuous note. That's one of the first things we learned as drummers because it's one of the more difficult techniques and it takes a while to develop that into something that sounds good. So I'll leave you with one more thought about percussion. We get to play all the weird stuff. Anytime a composer has some crazy sound effect that they want in their piece, they give it to the percussion section, and I think that's just great. Hi, my name is Aaron Dowry, and I'm a percussionist with the San Diego Symphony. I started taking percussion lessons uh, very young, actually when I was four years old. I started studying with private teachers. I was just so drawn into kind of the physicality and the energy involved in playing percussion. I actually didn't start learning mallet, like keyboard mallet instruments uh, until I was in middle school. You can be kind of limited if you're just kind of sticking to, you know, things you hit with a, a drumstick, like a drum set or a snare drum. Um, but playing mallet instruments opens you up to really incredible music. This is a marimba, and marimbas are made of wood, and they are played with a yarn mallet. So it's on a shaft and it's got um, usually a hard rubber core wrapped in some layer of yarn. What's interesting about the marimba is you will occasionally play things that require you to hold four mallets at once. Moving on, we have the xylophone, which looks a lot like the marimba, um, but it's different in that it's considerably smaller. It has a much higher pitched sound and you play it with a much harder mallet, with like a hard plastic. You get a lot more piercing kind of energy in the sound. And last we have the glockenspiel. Now the glockenspiel is made out of metal. These bars are made out of steel. So you're gonna get a much bigger, much brighter, much louder, more resonant sound. You'll notice that all of the mallet instruments we've seen uh, are set up like a piano when we're looking at it so that we have the black keys on the top and the white keys on the bottom. 